Wow, this thing is a beast. Will I shift to the shift? Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. Now, three or four years ago, Wilson released the Clash and they teased the racket with a pretty secretive kind of camo paint job. We didn't really know what was going on inside the racket. Well, they're doing something similar here, this time with the Wilson Shift. Now here's what I can tell you for a fact. The Shift 300 weighs 300 grams, has a 99 square inch head size and a 16 by 20 string pattern. Um, it has a 23 millimeter beam that flexes at 68 stiffness on our RDC machine. Now the swing weight is an interesting one because I've heard some reports of it being around 320 and I think that's what Wilson's trying to go for, but mine actually came in at 306, which is really low. Now the idea behind Wilson Labs is to release a prototype. This shift is actually a prototype gather feedback and then release the general version later in this case june or sometime in the summer now my big suggestion would be get that swing weight up to 320 because 306 was just too low the racket felt a little pingy a little metallic just a little weird at that low of a swing weight but as soon as i put some lead to try to get it up to that 320 put a leather grip to try to stabilize it a little bit more that absolutely transformed the shift now I got this cool new mic that's super mobile. Um, so I actually figured I'd bring it out to the tennis court and kind of share my initial thoughts, uh, at least the ones I had after I let it up to that 320 swing weight. All right. So first couple shots, whoa, with lead tape. Oh yeah, way more stable. Definitely needs some weight, but when you do, it becomes so much more consistent. Definitely a still stiff racket, but very pleasant. Uh, do struggle to take it on the rise and flatten it out a little bit, but it's still solid. Just really wants to play with spin. Uh, uh. Now, one thing I noticed is despite the high launch angle. Sometimes with rackets that have a high launch angle, I feel like they get a little wild on the slice. That's when I'm super dialed in. No problems there. Maybe down to that 1620 pattern. Okay, so we just delved into the early goings on of what happens in the mind of a racket reviewer, but now that I've extensively play tested it, I have a few more refined thoughts to give you. I always like to start with a racket's most redeeming qualities, and on the shift, that's gotta be the feel. There is a beautifully crisp response to this racket and an extremely well-defined sweet spot. Also, because it is stiff, you get that really instant response and the ball just kind of goes exactly where you tell it to. Now, I'm really happy to report this because I do feel that Wilson rackets have been getting a little bit mushier and a little bit bigger in the sweet spot recently, which is great for user friendliness and comfort, but it does take away from a bit of that precision and feel. That's definitely not the case on the shift. It is a very demanding racket. The sweet spot is quite small, and even after I added lead at three and nine, it stayed very unforgiving. The racket does like to flutter if you hit outside the sweet spot, and when you combine a fluttery frame with a stiff racket, it can definitely lead to a bit of uncomfortable vibrations at times. Some of you might start thinking that it's got that kind of traditional raw graphite feel. I can tell you that it doesn't. Now, I tested this alongside my 2015 blade, which to me is one of the purest hitting experiences, at least in recent times, and it doesn't feel like that. Now, I think it's down to this rumored spin technology in the actual flex of the racket. So obviously, you get a prototype, there's gonna be some rumors, there's gonna be some leaks, and here it's that Wilson actually laid up the graphite to kind of amplify string snapback. Now, how do they do that? From what I understand, the graphite is actually supposed to kind of flex in cohesion with the strings to almost propulse them out and create more of that snapback. Now, I don't know if that's actually the case. I don't know if that's going on here, but the racket does just seem to have more snapback uh, than a traditional frame. Still not quite as much as labeled spin rackets, but more than normal. Because it doesn't feel kind of traditional in its flex, I wouldn't be surprised if that flex technology is what's helping amplify the snapback. 
I also find the racket to be very quick through the air. It's very speedy. And I use that word kind of tactically because yeah, it's quick, but it also kind of looks like a speed. The beam is shaped kind of the inner beam here is shaped very similarly to the speed where it's almost oval triangular. So it is just a little bit more aerodynamic through the air, not quite as much as what you get on like traditional classic spin rackets that are just ridiculously aerodynamic, but definitely a little bit faster. I actually think this one is faster than the speed. I actually thought that Wilson was going to make this a full on spin racket because they haven't really had one for a while. And while it is a spin friendly racket, I don't think it's defined by its spin. And I'm actually pretty happy about that. Okay, so I think at this point, it's pretty clear that I really like this racket, and I'm very happy that Wilson didn't go and make it a full-on spin beast. Now, don't get me wrong, those have a very important role to play in the tennis community, but I've always found for my game, they tend to feel a little bit too launchy with their wild kind of string movement, uh, and a little bit inconsistent at times. Now, the launch angle here definitely isn't low. It's more medium-high, kind of like a pure drive. Uh, maybe just a little bit lower than a pure drive, but because it's so easy to generate spin with, you just naturally can control that ball. It just dips into the court a little bit more and it's always consistent, except for maybe on one shot type. And this is a very particular situation, but it's when you get those loopy kind of moon ball spin shots that are really slow and you try to counter them with flat pace. I found this one could be a little bit wild, especially at the beginning of my play test. Once I was dialed in and played around with lead a little bit more, I managed to kind of figure it out there but I still don't think it's the racket's forte and I do think this racket really excels when you play with spin. So obviously the shift is stiff, so you're not gonna get that classic soft racket control where you feel like you can just kind of grab the ball into the strings, get all that dwell time and just deposit it where you want on the court, but it's controlled because it's so precise and so crisp. You point this racket towards somewhere, the ball is going there. Also the stability was great, at least when I weighted it up. So as you can imagine, stable racket, precise racket, crisp racket, fantastic at the net. Just put your racket out there, use proper technique obviously, but the ball will just go where you tell it to go. And I was really Really pleasantly surprised with this racket on slices. Now, I really like 1820s on slices. Every time I go to one, I'm like, yep, yep, this is why I love 1820s. There's other reasons, obviously, but that's part of the reason why I like 1820s. Um, on this one, I felt like I could get that really low hanging, consistent slice that just kind of punches through the court and pushes the opponent back. Uh, so, really nice sensations there. Power wise, obviously, you got a thick beam. Mm is 23 millimeters thick. Yes, for the Yes, for the purpose of this video, we're going to go with 23 millimeters is thick. Anyways, you also got a stiff flex in an open string bed. So on paper, it was always going to be powerful and in practice it definitely is. Um, obviously you need to control that power, but because it's so spin friendly, you just kind of naturally do. I'm starting to realize this racket kind of excels in most metrics. Like I said the best thing about it was the feel. I maintained that. Um, it's very powerful. It's designed for spin and it's very spin friendly. And I mean, it's super controlled to me, although maybe not on flat hits. So I guess you could say that it's that's its biggest weakness. Um, although I have a really tough time saying that control is this racket's biggest weakness. Uh, so yeah, it's a really good racket. Um, anyways, uh, because the shift is so powerful and stable, it really likes when rallies get harder and quicker. That's kind of its bread and butter. It loves countering pace with even more pace and accelerating the game. So who's the shift for? Well, if your racket is best when rallies get faster, um, it's just gonna be better for a more advanced player. And that's just it. This is an advanced player's frame. It does have a small sweet spot, but because it's small, it's more precise. So you get that utmost connection to the ball and feel that I know advanced players kind of almost require to switch to a frame. Also, I do want to reiterate, you need spin to play with the 300 gram version of this racket. I have briefly tried the 315. Uh, that one's a very tight 1820. So I think if you're a flat hitter, that would be the one to go to. A review coming soon, by the way. So will I shift? Honestly, maybe. I do really love my gravity and the new version of that racket is coming out soon. So I do want to give that a shot, but I really, really like the shift. To me, it just has that X factor where I feel like my arm is just connected to this racket and it really does suit my game to a T. That being said, because this is a prototype and Wilson is literally asking for feedback, I do want to say 
I think the stability needs to be a little bit higher in stock form. Not everybody wants to customize their rackets and when it was 300 grams and with that 306 swing weight, I know that's probably a little low and it was probably just a little off spec, but it was just a little bit too unstable and I think it could actually do with a 10 gram static increase potentially. I mean, that's what my leather grip basically did. Definitely food for thought there, Wilson. So if any of you would like to try a shift, we have them available for demo or purchase in store, or you can check it out at racketsandrunners.ca. Now, if you buy a shift, you can actually be part of the prototype journey. Wilson's added this cool little QR code. You just gotta scan it. it, takes you to a mini review where you can share your thoughts and have a say in the final product. That's pretty sick. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the 315 gram shift review coming up very soon.